with mashed potatoes, green beans, uh, dinner rolls, uh, tossed salad, and uh, two pounds of dressings. That's what Karina's going to do. And we're proposing, if it's okay with y'all, that as we get lists of people that are coming, since you make a commitment to come, that some people bring a dessert and some people bring something to drink. And that way it keeps our costs down from them. Yeah, and we'll have a sign-up sheet for, say, like the desserts. There's no sense in every lady in here doing a dessert. And, Unless and, we all want to eat. And then, you know, somebody takes <laughs> a piece, a piece out of it, and then you take the rest of it home. So, you know, if, if your husband wants a, a particular pie, hello, Yvette. Um, uh, make him a pie and just leave it at home so that's a, you know we don't need everybody bringing one um we'll need to know if you're committed because we've got to let kareen know exactly how many meals by november the 19th november 19th it has been suggested that instead of um having a fixed price of something that we're um going to ask that you Make a donation of ten dollars to a fund, and and if you if you make it fine, if you don't make it fine, we just need to know whether you're going to be there because we need a, the the number of heads that are coming, the people that are coming. So that's November the nineteenth. Uh, anybody in here whose spouse doesn't attend this class go somewhere else or something? Uh, you know, obviously they're welcome. Please, please bring them. Please, please, please. Okay, that's a suggestion. Anybody have want to modify it, change it, have a hundred of hundred and eighty degree different suggestion? Please speak up now. Or do you like it and want to go with that? I like it. Yes, yes, yes. I, you know, you kind of assume that. All right, that's what we're going to go with. I have one more thing to tell you about. Hey, David. You will not want to miss the entertainment. It's going to be good. You're going to love it. And there are prizes to be well earned. Just going to tell you, don't miss the entertainment. You want to be there. You're going to love it. All right. Um... If y'all don't get the church uh, email that tells you everything that's going on here, please be, you know, if you have an email address, uh, call the church and sign up. They'll send it to you. I don't need to come up here to tell you everything that's going on because I could spend the whole time. Uh, just so I want to remind you that SALT is this week. If you're interested in going, uh, call the church tomorrow and let Rhonda know. It is $5, but... Uh, uh, you know, come if you can. Like I said last week, if we don't support adult, senior adult things, then uh, are you looking for the church? Or the Sunday school thing? Okay. Sunday school. Yeah. I'm, I'm out. I'm so sorry. Uh, if you don't support them, you know, they just, they'll, they'll, they'll quit happening. I mean, that's just, it's that simple. You know, nobody shows up. So be sure to do it. You know, unfortunately, Kay and I are out of town this, uh, this week. So, uh, we won't be able to be there. Uh, I, actually, I was going to ask this in private, and I forgot. Shirley, I ain't heard anything from Shirley. How's she doing, McCurry? I'm sorry, we got another Shirley in here. Shirley McCurry. She's doing okay. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, she's okay. Me bother her a lot. Yeah. Other than that, mentally, you know, she had off. Yeah, right. Sure. Okay. I just we hadn't, I hadn't thought about her in a while. I saw her name on the prayer list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Marshall, talk with Marshall this week. Uh, still the same, you know, I mean, uh, I, I threatened him. I, I told him that if he didn't start exercising, that I was going to bring Kay over there. <laughs> and, and he said he didn't want her to come over there. So I told him we was going to make him walk a mile in each direction. We are going to mile out, mile back. But he, he, he's doing well. He's just not exercising like he ought to, and I don't know why he won't do that. Uh, you know, we, we talked about Dan and Dan Robertson, uh, and, uh, you know, he had a stroke and everything. Well, Dan and Jan were in a wreck last week, and uh, I think they're both okay. Just, here this morning. Yeah, uh, she just, she got banged up. Apparently he didn't. 
But uh, Alan went to the hospital. I told you that uh, Dan's health is well. His cognitive is was not and hadn't, hadn't got to where it needs to be yet. And uh, in the hospital, Dan said something to Alan. That's the first time he's heard him talk since the stroke. So uh, that uh, peaked it. Uh, for those of let's see, uh, Lucy Clark plays the uh, organ. Her daughter Julie. Grew up in his church. Married John Cook. They moved to Birmingham. Uh, John and Robbie were in a uh, bicycle accident, uh, a bad one. And uh, John took a bad tumble, broke either his shoulder, his clavicle, uh, not broke it, shattered it. And so, uh, so you know, major surgery on that. He's a pilot for Delta, so he's not going to be flying, thank goodness, for a while. We don't want him uh, flying with a bad shoulder. I uh, talked with uh, Vicky. They're back. Uh, they just decided that, you know, just to uh, be uh, prudent, they weren't going to, you know, in case they did come out with something, they didn't want to bring it near, you know, so uh, they're going to give it a week and be back next week. Uh, something that's on uh, on this, the Joan, the prayer list that the people put out, or the staff puts out, that we really need to be praying about is uh, the search for a, uh, a youth pastor. Of course, Kirby's probably directly involved in that too, but uh, let's be sure to uh, uh, be praying for that because if, if our church looks like us, we are in bad, bad shape. You know, for those of us that uh, can remember, and it's sometimes it's good to look back, sometimes not. You know, we can remember when there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of children, young people, you know, from high school on down uh, involved in here. When I taught four-year-old preschool, we had four classes of four-year-olds with 15, 15 on row. I mean, I'd, I'd have 12, 15 every Sunday in my class. So we had four of those classes. And every age group was that same way. Uh, we don't, it's not like that anymore. So, uh, uh, you know, the church has got to rebound in that department. Something that uh, just uh, don't know me, for those of you that may be semi-new here, if you, if you didn't know, this was our church office. This is where the ladies sat. If I recall, that was Charles's, that door behind you is Charles Carter's office. This was, this was the, the mainframe of the church back in the day. And of course, now we've got the thing over there. So uh, uh, just interesting. Just don't know me a while ago. Many times I've been in this class. Okay, I've said enough. We've got plenty of time. You haven't heard anything from your pastor of Kentucky yet. And I still haven't. I'm going to give him until uh, the latter part of this month. And then I'll give him an ultimatum, I guess. Just let him know. <laughs> where let him know that if, if we're going to help him, we need to know something. That was fine. I said it kind of crudely. Yvette, how's your family? Um, I have Stacy's obituary. It's still on the list. I don't know why. Mm. Um, but this is obituary. Okay. Um, I may have an issue with my back, so I fell yesterday. Oh, no. I was on my back, hit the toilet. Mm. So I'm glad that I'm up. Mm. But my brother said the same. He got to go back on the 16th. I'm trying, I'm hoping he'll go away. If not, I'll be his driver. To take him back to Florida, he's saying that it's a lot that he has to do with oh, the hard sure. making. Told him one thing, but Florida tells him he's up and up. So now he's kind of like discouraged, saying he's not going to do it. And I'm like, you got to do it. <laughs> so I think Florida is helping him out a lot because it seems like he's being depressed. So the more he go down now, I see a difference in him. But, you know, the insurance only going to cover him for a year. So he has a year to make a decision oh. whether or not. And his body allowed him to do it. You know, so okay, we'll continue to be in prayer, yeah. prayer for them. <coughs> um, no, we'll just still. He, he's just, about, you know, cold weather doesn't yeah. agree with them. Yeah. <coughs> Willine? I have a phrase. <coughs> yep. My cousin that had the brain surgery. Right. She came through it fine. There's three parts of it. She had the surgery. She went home the next day. 
anyway. So she wow. went back Wednesday, and the doctors checked her and said that they did put the probe, the wire in the right place because it kept those tremors for just, just a little while. But she goes back in four weeks and has something like a pacemaker put in her chest, and that will control it. So, Fantastic. Fantastic. That's been amazing. Um, I'd like to keep my sister in prayer, Danielle and Ron Brooks. They left last Saturday going to Israel. They're still in Israel. Oh, no. well, um, my sister managed to get in touch with her um, this morning. She said today they're in Nazareth. They've canceled all the flights going into Israel. Right. And they're they're not supposed to come back until fly back out until Wednesday, but hopefully they're gonna get them out sooner before. Mm -hmm. Since they said it was even being worse, so hopefully they'll get them out. Yeah, I should have said something about that this morning. I was reading she's, about it. She's been wanting to go for thirty years and probably wow. got the chance to. Go. I was I was thinking I was thinking about that yesterday. I said there's people that you know. That lifetime trip, and they happen to be there during this one time. Uh, so we're, I think they send 500 Israeli people have been killed right now. Uh, I know John looks like he's embarrassed this morning. He's not embarrassed. <laughs> I had a good time. Yeah. Had a good time. <laughs> uh, that sunshine gets you every time. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Jimmy, I I just want the class to remember. Let, uh, I had the uh, pleasure last night of meeting an old high school classmate, good friend of mine who's been uh, a good friend for years, uh, Charles Harrington, Charlie Harrington, at the, uh, to, came and go, went to the Georgia game with him. His wife, Jeannie, uh, has, I guess it's uh, early onset Alzheimer's, uh, essentially the same thing Cork has. And uh, this is the first time I've seen them in about two years, and she's uh, beginning to go down pretty rapidly. So this is going to be a good day. All right. And of course, I failed to mention Shirley. You know, Shirley passed away, and uh, <coughs> uh, a memorial service be held sometime. You right. Know, the family do something that they hadn't scheduled. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else we need to be aware of? Uh, I was just checking on Rennell and Tom's address. Is it camera? Is it, <laughs> they, uh, they're checking on it too. <laughs> you want us to put it in pencil? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, we'll get their, their address and get it out. Everybody okay. have it on the list next week or okay. whatever. And I, and I forgot to put the, yeah. the website on the prayer list again. Yep, uh, go to YouTube, lifegroups.j. YouTube's uh, one of my favorite things, you know. <laughs> I've, I've saved thousands of dollars just for watching somebody fix something I didn't know how to fix. So well, that's true. That's, that's amazing, true. it's an amazing thing, amazing thing. Okay, let's see. I'm guessing I hit everything, everything's important enough. Uh, party, don't forget, we just, we need, well, we'll get a, a sign list, sheet. A sign up sheet, and uh, you can sign up and commit and to going. Here's our, here's our special fund, we'll, we'll start it around this morning, and uh, you can start contributing this yeah, morning. You know, yeah, if you don't have the money we this week, it's not impaired to this week. That's right, just, we, uh, we just, got plenty of time. Plenty of time, just uh, contribute to it, and that's going to pay for the party. <laughs> Well, that's going around quietly, I guess. I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, say a prayer. Yeah. <laughs> if you hear a jingle while I'm uh, while I'm praying, uh, I'm just uh, ignore it. All right, let's go, to Lord, prayer. Yeah, oh, yes, ma'am. Bonnie.
Anything else? Anything else? All right, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we've uh, we've taken care of a lot of stuff today, and we just thank you for it. But we've got some serious prayer needs here today, Lord. Uh, Hinton, uh, you know, uh, a good friend to, to many of us, most of us, uh, contributed so much to his former church. Uh, now, uh, he, what he contributed to our church so many years, and uh, then taking care of Barbara all those years, and now he has needs. Uh, Lord, we know those needs are being taken care of physically, so uh, what we can do and uh, is is pray for him. So let's, uh, so Lord, we'll be praying for Hinton and the doctors, and uh, may they uh, give him comfort. Lord, uh, you know, we're not in a, a class of of being in denial, we know that uh, at some point Hinton's going to be going home with Barbara, and so uh, you know this is the time. We just pray that uh, uh, he has peace and no pain, and uh, uh, that it, it's a, a good transition for him. But if it's not, if you're if you choose to keep him here, Lord, then we pray that uh, he can get through it, uh, get through with this back pain, and that uh, he can. Uh, come back and be with us again, walking these halls like we see him all the time. Uh, for things that are going on in Israel, that uh, situation over there, Lord, just uh, uh, nothing to do with biblical times or Christ or anything else. It's just uh, people being people. And uh, Lord, we need to, um, we just pray that there's a solution to that and all these other things that are going on all over the world where innocent people are being killed, like in Ukraine and Russia, and just on and on, Lord. It just makes you almost want to just quit watching the news. It just gets so depressing at times. Uh, for uh, Elaine's sister and family that are over there, Lord, we just uh, are praying for them that uh, the flights can safely uh, leave there and uh, get people back to their homes. And uh, uh, it's, you know, because of the historical nature of uh, Israel, it, it certainly is a shame that their trip was interrupted, that they couldn't have just enjoyed uh, uh, going, uh, seeing the Bible brought to life, uh, just uh, viewing the areas over there. But uh, we're praying for safety as they uh, look to get back. Uh, for Jeannie Harrington and uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, Lord, we're just uh, praying for them. We we all have been touched by it, either through this class or personally, and uh, we know how tough it is, how hard it can be, and uh, just pray for that family as they deal with it. Uh, for Bonnie Crawley, uh, breast cancer, uh, co-worker of the vet, uh, uh, for her brother as he makes decisions on... Uh, uh, his health needs. Uh, we just pray that he makes the right decisions there, Lord. And for certain, for a vet losing her cousin and uh, other, you know, all things going on in her family, Lord, just continue to lift her up. For those that uh, would like to be here today that can't, uh, Phil in Florida, uh, certainly uh, 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 Mary, uh, we don't know where she is here today, Harry and Evelyn. Hoyt and Terry, their situations. Uh, we remember Shirley, Lord, and uh, you know it. Uh, we know that she's in a much better place today. That's always something we say, but it's the truth. Uh, you know, there comes a time in our life where we we're going to transition, and uh, thankfully we are transitioning to heaven. And uh, uh, and just uh, know she's she's happy, happy to be there, Lord. So much to pray for, Lord. We we thank you. Pray for the services that follow, uh, for uh, the message that will be brought to us today. We just uh, I lift the speaker up for uh, Kirby and Debbie and their contributions to the class, Kirby and all that he gives to our class as far as biblical knowledge. We thank you for that. But we're always looking forward to a good week. Uh, and uh, we're... Uh, holds true this week uh, as we leave here may we uh, may when we encounter people that we always show the love of Jesus through our our words and our actions and our smile on our face Lord that's uh, you know you've commanded us not only to love you but to love others 
And uh, Lord, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for this class and all it means to each and every one of us. And all these things we ask in our precious name. Amen. <laughs>
all there just one time. What's the analogy that Jesus is trying to stress here? What, what, and what is the, does anybody know what the significance of Jesus talking to his disciples about the vine would be? <laughs> In Old Testament, you'll find there are, there's actually about four different Hebrew words for vine. But the one that is closest in uh, meaning to the Greek word that Jesus uses here is used about 44 times in the Old Testament. And the bulk of those are describing the relationship between God and Israel. God talks of Israel as being the vine. So when, so when Jesus talked to his disciples about them being the vine, that would have been uh, an analogy they were accustomed to. That would have been something that, that they would have heard before. Uh, that term only appears nine times in the New Testament, and three of them are in this particular verse. What is it that Jesus is stressing to his disciples? Can't do anything without me. Yeah. The vine is only productive if the vine is attached to, in this instance, he uses the term branch. But if, if it's not a part of the, uh, the system, if it's not a part of the plant, if it's not attached to the roots, the vine doesn't produce anything. The vine withers and dies if it's not. The point Jesus is, is stressing is, is that for Christians to be productive, for Christians to produce fruit, Christians have to abide in him. They have to remain in him. They have to remain attached to the branch. Now, he also says, what happens to vines? How many of you have ever grown tomatoes on a vine? Grown uh, grapes on a vine? Yeah. What's one of the things you have to do at, periodically? Prune. You got to prune them. You want to make them produce, you got to go prune. If you're growing tomatoes, you got to go out and pinch those little suckers uh, off from between the branches. Yeah. Has God ever pruned you? Yeah, yeah. We, we're we're constantly being pruned. Uh, part of our relationship with Christ is being pruned, is is uh, being shaped, being molded. You do that with those plants to make them more productive. Christ does that in our lives to make us more productive. What happens if you have a diseased or a portion of the plant that is uh, not producing? Cut it, off. Cut, it off. Cut it off. Jesus says that if you're not producing, then if anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Does that, is, is Jesus saying that if we don't abide in him, we <clears throat> are at risk of losing our salvation? You're saying you're not going to lose it according to... Right. What, what is he saying then? If he's speaking to his disciples, if he is speaking to those who have accepted him, it, as he says, you're already clean to those that have accepted him. When he says that if you're not producing, then uh, there's, there's no need for you that... Uh, if anyone does not remain in me, he's thrown aside like a branch and he will. What, what does he mean by that? I might call you home early. I don't know. Now, 
Not any use of the kingdom. He doesn't, he doesn't have any use for you. Now, you're not saved to this life for your good. You're saved to this life to be a part of the body of Christ. You're saved to the next life for your good. Folks, this, you know, we, we, we talk about what's going on in the world today, and I, and I, and I share with my, my friends and those who understand the Bible. Why are we surprised? That's right. It's not going to get any better. It, it doesn't, nowhere in the Bible does it tell you that it's going to get better. The only time it gets better is after he comes back. Uh, so, so you're not saved to this life for your good. If you're a Christian, this is the worst you'll ever have. Yeah. Uh, so you're saved to that next life. So what is your purpose if you're saved in this life? Produce fruit to serve. If you're not producing fruit and serving, <clears throat> he doesn't have a need for you. Now, he may or may not bring you home, but don't expect that abundant life that he's promised if you're not abiding in him. Uh, you know, I, I, I think... For a Christian, one of the most miserable thoughts would be to be saved to that glorious existence of being eternally, perpetually in, the, in his presence and having to stay here doing nothing. Um, sir, but that's like yesterday I was watching on um, TikTok and this young black guy was doing sports mm -hmm. and he was at um, some type of club or whatever. Not, it might not be a club, but he was right. somewhere. And he was saying that he was talking about the Bible, how he, this first, I don't know if he's saying himself or this person in general, he was saying he could go to church every day, but if he doesn't, don't serve within the church, and said the person got to heaven when he went through the golden gate, but he know the gate never get closed. And he was saying that God acknowledged that person, but he didn't know him. Right. He said, I don't know you. How you didn't serve me. Yeah. yeah. And 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 how do we come to know God? Through our relationship with Christ and by abiding in him. You know, you can meet someone. That doesn't mean you know them. You know them by experience. You know them by relationship. You know them by spending time with them. Uh, Jesus is telling his, disi to his disciples that to fulfill the purpose for which you were placed on this earth, you need to spend time with me. You need to be in a relationship with me. You, the only way you can understand what it is you are placed here for is through that relationship. Now, Jesus in, in this metaphor uses the term fruit. As I said, that term's used more than any other word in the single word in this passage. What's the purpose of fruit? <coughs> to what? nourish us. No. 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 Fruit is not produced to nourish you. <clears throat> Fruit is produced to perpetuate the plant. Fruit exists to feed the seed. Fruit exists so that there can be other plants. See, I think sometimes we, when, when we think about the fruit that is to be produced by this relationship with Christ, we think of that in terms of nourishing us. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. What, what is the fruit of the Spirit? Yeah. Galatians says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. How do those perpetuate Well, 
if the per if you demonstrate those, it will influence others to demonstrate those. Yeah. If we are the vine, if Jesus is the branch, and the purpose of that relationship in this life is that we produce fruit, and the fruit we produce is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. The purpose of that is, who, who is described when I say love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control? Yeah. Christ. We, the fruit of the Spirit is perpetuating that which is Christ to the rest of the world. Now, why do we want to project Christ to the rest of the world? So we can produce fruit. <laughs> So that others can be saved. What has to happen to fruit for the seed to grow? It's got to die. Yeah. Uh, but the death of the fruit produces the next plant. So, so what Jesus is using a beautiful analogy he, here. He's saying, I'm the branch. Through me comes all that you need to produce fruit. In, if, if you were to carry that analogy through in botany, that's the uh, all of the nutrients, all the sap, everything that you need to grow and produce fruit is through the branch. You're producing that fruit not for the benefit of the vine, but for the benefit of the next vine. The next person that's, that's going to, to be a part of that branch. It's going to be, in fact, what you're doing, the, where, the, where the, the botany analogy breaks down a little bit, is that the seed doesn't just all of a sudden grow and attach to the vine. It has to be grafted to the vine. And it's grafted to the vine through Christ's sacrifice through the plan God made. But for that to happen, there has to be fruit that produces the next vine. Now, that leads us to our second part of the lesson about serving. If we're called to produce fruit, what are we supposed to do with that fruit? That fruit is to perpetuate, to create the next vine. Do we do that simply through this fruit of the Spirit? Do we do that simply through love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control? Not quite. We, that is... The, the fruit, but let me, let me, I want to back up to the other lesson just a second because there were two other points in that passage that I wanted to, to, to stress. One of, one of those is that in there it says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. Does that mean that if you're abiding in Christ, and you're producing the fruit that Jesus is going to grant you any wish you want? Yeah. What it means is, is that if you're abiding in Christ, your wishes are going to be the same as his wishes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so of course he's going to grant you his wishes. It's, it, 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 you're going to change. Your wishers are going to change. And, and, and as a, as a result, Jesus says, if you're abiding in me and you are becoming like me, you're going to want the same things that I want. And why wouldn't I give you the same things that I want? But there was another thing I saw in there 
that this analogy, I'd never realized it before. It says, my father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. How do we glorify God? Lots of different ways. We glorify God in worship. We glorify God in prayer. We glorify God in, in song. We, there, there are many ways we do it. But if you follow this analogy, when is the vine most glorious? It's producing. When it's in full bloom. Yeah. I mean, today, the, where we're, the season we're going into right now, all the leaves are dropping off the trees. They're not dead. Trees are still alive, but they're not glorious. The trees will become glorious again in the spring when they start producing. If it's a fruit tree, tree they're going to produce leaves, they're going to produce blossoms, then they're going to produce the fruit. If we're producing fruit, fruit we are blooming for God. And we're glorifying God through the production of that fruit. Is anybody saved by love, joy, patience, kindness, peace, gentleness, and self-control? No, that doesn't save anybody. No seed is produced by the beauty of the fruit. But it's what attracts an unsaved world. Mm -hmm. That fruit that you produce is what draws them to you. Why are you different? Why do you respond differently? Well, <clears throat> let me step back. The first question is, do you respond differently? Do you react to the things of the world different from the world? If you don't, then you're not producing the fruit. The fruit is what attracts the rest of the world. Why do you show love when the world shows hate? Did y'all, how many of you caught the sermon last week? Love is Christian's retribution. Yeah. Well, how is it that you show uh, kindness when the world shows anger? How is it that you show joy when the world shows disdain or, or, or contempt or, or, or dissatisfaction? You know, how can you show peace when the rest of the world shows war? How can you show gentleness when the rest of the world shows uh, anger, shows aggression? How is it that you can show self-control in a world that's out of control? Those are the questions that draw others that don't know Christ to you is the fruit of the Spirit. You're different. Why are you different? What makes you different? You know, first of all, we don't save anybody. Only God saves people. We're the messenger. God prepares their hearts. But God also knows God's plan is that they have to have someone to share that message with them. They may know there's a stirring in their heart and not understand what that stirring's all about. They may know there's a hole in their life that they can't feel. And if they can't feel it, they don't understand why they can't feel it. Jesus expects us to share our faith through the fruit of the Spirit 
to others that others might become grafted onto this branch, that others might become vines, that others might produce fruit. Did you know that statistics say that 78% of born-again Christians never share their faith with a non-Christian? We're real comfortable talking about Christ with other Christians. We're not real comfortable talking about Christ with those who are not Christians. Why is that? It's a battle. Yeah. It, we don't want to get in the argument. Uh, we're, we're worried that they're going to ask us a question we can't answer. That, that, we're, that we're not uh, uh, prepared enough. That we're not, uh, uh, you know, uh, we're not knowledgeable enough. What's the problem with that? We, we, we. <laughs> it ain't about us. God doesn't call us to share him in our power. He calls us to, he, he, he says, look, the best that you can do is produce this fruit. You can show joy. You can show patience. You can show kindness. You can show gentleness. You can show self-control. That will attract their interest, and I'll take it from there. I just need you to produce the fruit. I just need you to be different from the rest of the world. Do you know that those same statistics tell us that 47% of unchurched people who responded to the statistics said they'd be open to having that discussion that they they would consider if somebody would talk to them but only 29 percent of those respondents said anybody had ever tried to talk to them when are we supposed to share the gospel? Whenever it yeah, whenever. Whenever, wherever, however. You know, are we supposed to make a uh, concerted effort? Sure. Uh, we we have programs here at church that are designed to help equip you, to help train you, uh, to help you put you in a position to go and share the gospel. But that's not how Jesus started it. How did Jesus start it? How did he start with sharing the gospel? He went and got two fishermen. He didn't go get two Sunday school teachers. He didn't go get two theologians. He didn't go and get professors at some uh, uh, at, at, at the synagogue. He got two fishermen. Why do you think he got two fishermen? Because they would serve and because it was through them that they would be the ones who are going to be different. They are the ones who are going to attract the interest of others. Are you surprised when you see a someone you look up to as a pastor providing these, showing these fruits of the Spirit? No, we expect that of them. But that's not how Jesus, how God plan for the message to be shared it's not just up to those people it's through everyday people just like you and I and we're to do it in our everyday lives as we go Jesus said make disciples I have to confess to you there have been many times in my life when there was an opportunity 
to share the gospel. And I didn't share the gospel. Be alert to when God is moving in the lives of other people. Sometimes, sometimes that's through circumstances in their lives. When you can minister to them. When you can share with them. When you can come alongside them. And I'm talking about people who don't know Christ. When, when, you, when you can reach out to them. Sometimes it's in circumstances in your life. When they're watching. When, when they're trying to understand why you respond differently. I, I had a had a business partner. I think one of the one of the greatest compliments I've ever had was a business partner who at that point in his life I, I don't think he understood my walk with Christ, but he said, I don't understand it. I could come in today and tell you that everything had failed that, you know, the business was collapsing. And you'd be the same. I don't understand that. And I didn't use that as an opportunity to share with him why that was what I felt. Uh, use those day-to-day -day opportunities to share the gospel. You... You know, God didn't call you to share the gospel through your knowledge of the Bible. What does he call you to share? What he's done in your life. Your personal relationship with him. What he's done in your life. You don't have to be. Are they going to have questions you can't answer? Absolutely. Do you have questions you can't answer? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's not the important part. The important part is to explain to them this relationship you have that makes those questions okay. I don't have to know the answer to that question because of the relationship through Christ that I have with God. If, if you haven't, participated in some of the programs and things that are available here uh, in church to help equip you to share the gospel. I would encourage you to do that not because it makes you a better Christian and, and actually not because it's going to even, in my opinion, make you better at sharing the gospel what it's going to do is make you less afraid to share the gospel simply because you feel a little bit better prepared or you feel a little bit better equipped. Harvey, sometimes, sometimes this week, a young girl, lady, that went to college with our grandson, mm -hmm. who he knew and had been friends in college. They've been out of school for three or four years. She called out of the blue this week. And she told him he, she didn't accept Christ until she was in college. And he was the influence that put her there. Yeah. The, the, the he idea, had no idea. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the idea that, that someone has seen Christ through me is, is the, the, the crowning jewel of being a Christian. Yeah. Uh, my, my good friend Charlie, who is a, who is a strong Christian, uh, showed me a picture last night of his son, who is uh, married in the uh, Navy. He's a uh, C-140 pilot married to a woman who is a Predator pilot uh, uh, in, in the Navy. A picture, he's out in San Diego now, showed me a video of him being baptized. And I, at first, I was kind of taken back that, you know, it's 
Charlie, your son hadn't accepted Christ. And then Charlie explained to me that, that his son, Zion, is his name, that Zion had accepted Christ at an early age. He'd just never been baptized. And he came to the realization that he had to get things in the right order that he needed to make his public profession. And, and he was getting baptized in what those who grew up on a farm would have, would have called, called a trough, a, a, a big uh, uh, steel uh, tub, yeah, yeah. At, a, at a church in, in San Diego, California. Yeah. If you don't take anything else out of these two lessons today. Take the idea that, that God wants you to be producing fruit. God has shared with you what that fruit is, but he wants you to produce that fruit so that others will be grafted onto the branch. Not just produce fruit for your benefit, produce that fruit for the benefit of others. Comments, questions, complaints about today's lesson? You weren't, you're not prepared. So I did just thought, you know, we've all heard this, you know, this particular thing many times here. Uh, Jesus was a teacher, a rabbi, so that's a pastor. If you're a pastor, you're talking to a large group of people, you use analogies and things like that. I wonder why when he is talking to his inner circle, why he would talk to them like that instead of just being direct. If you don't go out and share your faith, you know, I'm going to not have it. You know, just wonder why he used the analogy. You know, Jimmy, I, I, I can't say that I've ever done any kind of uh, or read anything on that but but my guess and it's purely a guess is is that Jesus understood how people learned and that people often learn better through an illustration than they do through a direct message uh, and and so uh, also, If God is all knowing, and Jesus, as part of the, uh, the the Trinity, is all man and all God, you think maybe Jesus kind of knew that we'd be reading these words sometime two thousand years later, and that His words, while directed toward the disciples, were intended for far more people. Oh, like so just down the road. Anything else? For now, would you close us in prayer this morning? Father, how thankful we are that we can come and hear your word given on Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for this church, for the teachers that are here, for the pastors that are here. We thank you for this lesson this morning. Help us to be fruit bearing and go out and tell others about you. Not only tell, but show our lives. Father, we just um, love you and we want to serve you. And we just ask that you be with those in the uh, church service later than today that souls might be touched, that the Holy Spirit is working in us. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a great day. Good week, and I'll see you next week.